What's up guys and welcome back for another EVE Online video. <clears throat> I was asked in the comments to kind of go over the extraction window and the graph that's here. And I figured I'd just take the opportunity to kind of explain a lot of the metrics that are um, kind of present here and how you kind of use this information to your advantage. The first thing I'll cover is this graph here. And really what this graph represents is the distribution of the raw resources over the course of the cycle. So this cycle is actually set up for 24 hours and so if you roll over here it's going to show you cycle one the cycle number how many units will come out of that cycle and then what you've accumulated so far total and then also the timestamp. so this is the first 15 minutes and then the bottom number is actually the running average the running hourly average that your extractor will be doing so this number over here the average per hour, 45,931. That number comes from the very last cycle, the cycle 96. And that's after taking all of these other cycles into account and the yield that came out and then averaging it all out at the end. That's probably the most accurate number that will give you a good idea of what your per hour raw is. These spikes here are really just uh, cycles that are going to be producing more than the others. This doesn't represent waste or anything. So like the first cycle here, we get 18,000 and then down over here, we get 16. Whereas down over here on cycle 22, it's like 12. So it goes like up to 16 and then down to 11 and then up to 13. Now you, the, uh, this is actually a really good way to kind of see just, I really don't actually look at this too much. I, um, you can, and I have done it in the past where I've taken every single, I've taken every fourth cycle and taken the, um, the accumulated value and put it in a spreadsheet and run a graph on it, but it's tedious. It's very hard to do, um, to do on every planet that you're kind of monitoring. That's why I end up using just the average per hour raw to see kind of like how I need to configure the, or how many factories I need or <clears throat> anything like that. Another way, another metric you can use to kind of see how you're doing is this just total number of raw you'll get. And here, anything over a million on a 24 hour period is really good. This is only going to, this, the volume of this is only going to be like 5,000 cubic meters or so, but, uh, usually a million, a million and a half on a 24 hour cycle, um, is pretty decent. It's really going to kind of depend on the, uh, the distribution and the density. Now, another thing I'll talk about here too, is the number right here on the extractors. This is actually an index. This is a raw output quality index. Now this runs from. It's like a, but you can look, think about it like a percentage. So we can grab, let's see, we'll grab one of these, figure out which uh, number one is. There we go. So you see number one is basically at like 160%. The actual metric that's involved here is unknown. Even if you bring this all the way down to like get right on a hundred, that would be like baseline based on like where the density is. Um, and then obviously the higher number, the better, the lower number. So even if you don't have the heat map on, you can kind of tell how good an area is based on how far over a hundred it is. So I try to be anywhere between like a 160, um, plus on this. And obviously if you overlap, then you start getting a percentage. See, that's where it shows you actually get a percentage, um, cut on, on there. So that index is really important. Um, not a whole lot of control mechanism there. Really the, the goal there is to try to keep it. Uh, as high as possible on all of your nodes and kind of have them as evenly spread as possible. The other thing to notice too is if you're going to use like any sort of spreadsheet to like figure out your um, how much you brawl you're getting and versus how much you need to go on your uh, your factories. Whenever you start, like right now, if we uh, this shows forty five seven nine six, so this is going to change once we actually start it. So if we actually hit start extraction. And then we go back in here. It's actually going to be different um, because what it does is it the, the first the first thing you see is kind of like um, um, it's kind of an estimate. But once you actually start the extraction, it'll tell you exactly um, what was pulled. Because the way that it works is it takes whatever the configuration of density is on the planet when you start that extraction, and all of those units, all nine nine hundred and twenty seven thousand two hundred sixty six units of raw were already extracted from the planet. And the extractor is just going to feed it to you over the course of the cycle time. So if you just keep like turning this off and on, off and on, well, you'd have to like start the extractor, hit accept, 
and then wait the 30 seconds, stop the extractor, start it again, and then hit accept again. You could literally just kind of juice a planet out completely, which is really bad. You don't want to do that. That's also another, that's also a big reason why there's a lot of people doing PR on a single planet. Then um, all these numbers across the board will be really low. Like this planet right here, um, I can average, you know, 38,000 um, for a 24 hour cycle, but another temperate planet, same configuration could potentially go like 50 to uh, 60,000, which is, which I consider really good. The closer you get to like 60,000 per hour average is really kind of the sweet spot for a 24 hour uh, period there and everything. So hopefully that uh, kind of explains um, everything um, in, in good detail. And obviously like on this planet, I'm running two extractors, one runs 10 heads and then one just fluctuates. If like the density is really good, I'll just kind of figure it out in my spreadsheet. This, um, even just this uh, extra 3,800 average per hour on top of everything is enough to kind of, uh, is enough to keep all these fat, all 80 these factories running 24 hours a day, which is great. Um, another metric I'll kind of share too is every head, basically every two heads equals um, a basic factory. So for instance, if the density on this planet gets really, really bad, where I can't, I, I, it doesn't warrant eight factories, what I can do is before I start the extractor again, I can decommission one of these, go down to seven factories, which will allow me to put two more heads on. If I go down to six factories, I'll be able to go up to five heads. Um, and that's kind of how I look at it. Um, and depending on the density and everything, if the density is really good, um, then I don't really necessarily have to have that many heads. I can go more factory or if the density is really low or the hour average hour uh, raw is really low um, or something then you know it just really depends on like how everything uh, kind of works works out there what I'll do is I'll turn on this heat map here so we can kind of see a little bit more of a representation of moving these heads around and everything so we'll go ahead and stop this thing again so as you can see here this one is for the other extractor that's why you can't select it but like this one is about 162 but we can move it around a little bit, 164. You see it's a little bit better over here. Actually, it makes a lot more sense for it to be like right there, which is understandable because it's more into the white. And then uh, I'm pretty sure we could probably move the head here on this other extractor and get a little bit better there. And that's just kind of min-maxing. I really don't try to min-max the, the output quality index too much. Um, if you get good placement in white, then it's going to reflect over here. And that's really all you need to... To really worry about and everything but just to recap and everything um this is running i'm running basically 11 heads on this planet with eight uh factories which is enough to i produce just enough extra raw to fill in the gaps um, for the diminishing uh yield uh, because as you can see here as the cycle progresses the yield per hour or per 15 minutes diminishes so if you're producing more raw than what you're using then the extra raw that you have in reserve will help fill the gap, which basically like allows your factories to run at a consistent rate, uh, which is exactly the reason why I have this other extractor. If this was a really, 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 really good planet with great output, then 10 heads on a single extractor is plenty. You could probably, you probably still wouldn't be able to justify like 10 heads and like 12 factories. It's very, very hard to run 12 factories with only 10 heads. And you can't run 12 factories with two extractors because of the, uh, the power um, resource for the command center. So you really just kind of have to play this like balancing act in order to get everything uh, kind of situated. But hopefully this video kind of uh, answered a lot of questions that people had with the uh, kind of the UI and the graph and all of that. But really it's all just about numbers. It's about just kind of looking at and knowing what to look at too. Um, the important metrics, if you're really trying to track it, is gonna be this average per hour. And then, um, and then that comes from the uh, accumulated um, overall cycle um, average per hour or per cycle per 15 minutes, whatever, um, all, uh, accumulated, but thank you for watching, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.